We've reached the midway point of 2018. We've reached the month of E3, and boy, is it loaded with quality titles. That's why we're here to bring you every Nintendo Switch game releasing in June 2018. What's going on, everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. Gabe is here. A lighter month in terms of quantity, but definitely a gold mine in terms of quality. We've got 30 new releases, and granted, there will be some that spring up along the way. A few will probably be delayed, and maybe even a couple will go into the no man's land of coming later. But for now, we've got 30, and Gabe, I'm going to let you kick it off with Blaz Blue Cross Tag Battle. Yeah, I'm actually quite a fan of the BlazBlue franchise. I played the demo slash beta slash whatever they ended up calling it uh, recently, and I had a good time with it. Clearly, the game doesn't look as good on Switch that it does on other platforms, but I still had a really good time. It is filled with modes, which, you know, it's always difficult for value propositions for fighting games, but I feel like this does offer enough. It does have story. Uh, it does have characters from another very beloved franchise. So, yeah, BlazBlue is something that... I'm sort of looking forward to it. It snuck up on me. The game's out, like, you know, very, very soon. It's out this week. So I'm going to be yep. playing it. June 5th, $49.99. It'll be available digitally and at retail by Arc System Works. All right, Gabe, I'm going to take you to a game that I know is near and dear to both of our hearts. Uh, it is Shaq Fu, A Legend Reborn, $40 June 5th. This game uh, is actually part of NBA Playgrounds, oddly enough. It was promised as a free download uh, for sort of the the rough launch that NBA Playgrounds had. Um, it's $40, so if there's any value to this game, like you're getting a good amount free, I'm not sure that there will be. It is a game based on Shaquille O'Neal, but hey, stranger things have happened in the games world. Zach, are you telling me you don't want to power up with every nickname Shaq has ever had from Big Daddy O to Big Diesel? <laughs> Do are, you, there, are there more than that? Yeah. Do you want to master devastating? No, there, probably. Uh, do you want to master devastating combos and let Shaq rip against his enemies? Ooh. Do you want to wield katana, shuriken, and baseball bats? Do you want to travel to locations around the world and use each technique, uh, each unique environment? Excuse me, against your enemies, Zach. Is this anything you want to do? Uh, I will play this game if the final boss is confirmed to be Charles Barkley. Oh, that, that is one of the most uncomfortable it, moments I've ever witnessed. Constant moments. Constant moments. <laughs> I, I, we're taking way too long here, but did you see the one where he's trying to explain to Kenny how like he'll save gas if he like fills up when he's at half a tank? No. Okay, you got to watch that. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Big Aristotle. That's another nickname of his. Um, so that's, that's Shaq Fu <laughs> releasing this week. Uh, happy birthday, Gabe. Uh, Your birthday is June 5th. Okay. It's not, but all right. $40 physical, uh, and there's a demo available as well. Now, this game is out on other platforms, and it is a sandbox game in which players create cube-shaped worlds that give rise to diverse and unique life forms. So it's like happy birthday to the world. This is a very large-scale birthday party from NIS America. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's just a really good time uh, if you want to, you know, sing happy birthday to everyone. I mean, let's just put... Bring in another sports reference. Did you see John Gruden sing happy birthday to Jordy Nelson? Yes, I did. <laughs> That's a very aggressive happy birthday. Please don't sing happy birthday like that to me. Hey, he's an aggressive man. I'm with it, man. Yeah, so this one, it, I don't know. It has like middling reviews on Steam. Um, it came out almost a, a full year ago on Steam. It is like an interesting toy box, sort of sandbox style game. Um, I, yeah, it's probably not for us. Probably. All right, uh, Gabe. The Infectious Madness of Dr. Decker also releases on June 5th, and that might be for you. It's $12.99. Uh, it's an FMV game. Uh, there are 1,600 HD full motion video responses. It's more of like a question and answer murder mystery, um, and they have a random murderer chosen at the start of the game. So that's pretty cool that it's like randomized FMV. I kind of like that. Uh, there are six suspects, Gabe. You have to figure out who is the culprit, um, and then uh, you can ask whatever you want. It's a free text input system, so you can type questions with touchscreen support, and then uh, watch what happens in all of their HD FMV scenes. I think you're the killer every time. Yikes. I also think that the lighting, uh, I'm looking through the screenshots, whoever lit this, you needed to do a better job. It's it's Gabe, it's mysterious. Don't you see all the, like, the... Uh, yeah, I get it, like, shadow... Shack test in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. 
All right, so remember when we said like there's going to be a lot of quality? We may have started off a little rough, uh, but don't worry. It's going to get there. Uh, Shape of the World comes out June 6th, 1499. This is a digital release. Uh, this is a very uh, esoteric game. It reminds me a lot of Fae in visual style. Um, it is a first-person exploration game. You get to play with the ecosystem. There's a lot of interesting animals, flora. Uh, the forest materializes as you move through it and regrows as you pass through areas you've previously explored, so it's slightly procedural, I guess, in that way. Um, it has a dynamic soundtrack, and it's mostly just about kind of, like, exploring and seeing what's going on. There's no clock, no perils. You just get to spend a couple of hours escaping your work, your anxiety, your stress, it says. Oh, but uh, we might need this game. Yeah. <laughs> so sh Shape of the World is something we might play. All right. Next up, we've got a magical high school girl coming June 7th, 1499. I'm telling you, Gabe, the quality is coming. Uh, it is a magic crafting roguelike RPG. Um, it's got very uh, Super Nintendo style or PlayStation 1 style graphics here. Not a whole lot of detail on the game. Um but yeah, if you're into magic, high school gir girls, move on. Okay. ACAC Arcade Archives Neo Geo Riding Hero is on June seventh. This one brings you motorcycle action from 1999. It uh, obviously put out by SNK and published by Hamster. Um, it's a masterpiece, Gabe. They say, and it is uh, all about motorbikes and trying to make sure that every split second counts not even every second counts Gabe every split second and if you look at some of these screenshots the characters are very very ruthless I'll show no mercy says this giant four-headed man mm. I I always feel like a little bit weird when these uh, arcade archives things come out because like I'm like almost jealous I wish I would have played these when I was kids uh, a kid <laughs> so that I, I I felt like some nostalgia like I, I didn't play this so I mean it, it looks like a game I would have played right it, Kind of looks like Road Rash a little bit. Bring Road Rash, uh, the Genesis version, to to switch somehow. Figure that out. But yeah, until then, you can try this. All right. So the Banner Saga Two is coming on June seventh for nineteen ninety nine. I'm gonna get this one. I'm there, excited yeah. for Banner Saga Three. I played a little bit of Banner Saga One. Banner Saga Two. You know, sort of the uh, the middle child. Gabe, you love to give Charmeleon some love. Let's give Banner Saga Two some love. These are really good. Uh, strategy RPG games with intense battles, dire consequences, and very beautiful uh, artwork. And that third one is coming later this summer, so this is a good chance to uh, dip your toes in these tricky waters, and I am going to play it. Yeah, Banner Saga is a great series. I think this is the first game of, like, you know, undeniable quality. The other ones, like, could be cool. We just haven't played them. But this one, like, we know for sure is very good. There's a new race in this one that wasn't in the first one. Improved strategic combat with consequences. Yeah, I'm all about this one. Yes, indeed. All right, D-Generation, the original, launching on June 7th. No price as of yet. Uh, it says, by popular demand, the original retro game. So... Uh, Alone with your jetpack, you have flown from Finland across the Ural Mountains in the entire length of Asia to deliver a package to Gen Genoak Biolabs in Singapore. You land on the building's 80th floor. Okay. I don't even know what this game is. I'm going to be honest. We promise. I can't even Quality is coming. I swear to you guys. I can't even pick this out. I mean, maybe it's cool. I don't. I mean, I yeah, I'll, I'll keep talking about it. You find her reception is hiding behind her desk. She tells you that Janok's head scientist, uh, Dorita, has been demanding the package you're carrying. His last panic message came over an hour ago. The package is more important than you could have thought. You I, don't... <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what this is. Same. All right. We're not original enough. Isn't Degeneration X like a, a wrestling group? I don't... I'm pretty sure it's like a WWE thing. WWF. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Grid Retro Enhanced coming on June 7th. Intense cyberpunk neon hacking action. It's an intense arcade style cyberpunk hacking shoot 'em up. Those are my favorite genres. Cyberpunk hacking arcade style shoot 'em up. Um, pilot your craft to hack through an evolving set of punishing enemies, deadly lasers, and fiendish obstacles. It reminds me a little bit of um, Thumper, less uh, satanic, um, <laughs> more like Res. Um, Grid takes a classic bygone era and evolves into a modern arcade experience. It is a Congregate published joint. 
But um, yeah, this one looks okay. If you're into that sort of a fast pace neon shoot em ups. Yeah. All right. Iro Hero or Iro Hero, June 7th, 1299. In a world where humans are used as power supplies, only one man has the will to change it all, Gabe. Gosh, if I'm ever harvested for supplies, first of all, I don't have a lot of supplies in me. I'm very thin. Mm -hmm. um, so please don't harvest me. But, uh, Gabe, I would rather you just send me to a different planet than have me harvested here on Earth. What planet do you want to go to? Do you care? Uh, I want to go to Happy Birthdays Planet. I want you to make me a planet in Happy Birthdays. Okay. The year is 2306. It's a century after the Nyagu taught mankind how to obtain electricity from their inner energy. And now enterprises have started to exploit humans in farms. Okay, there are 10 different types of enemies, 10 final bosses, 9 levels, unlock special skills. So it's a, uh, it's like a battle game shoot 'em up kind of. It's, yeah, it's definitely like a top down shooter, retro arcade style. Let's move on. Do it. Catobat <laughs> Cato War is for 389 June 7th. Okay, please, I'm telling you, the end of the video will be, will be worth it. The real-time card battle game features simply attacking with energy accumulated cards, but hottest battle? Grammar, my dudes. This is like reading those old Wii. Remember when Giant Bomb would read the Wii uh, yeah. eShop oh, press well, releases? I what also, is happening? I want to make that clear, right? Sometimes, like, we flub, but also, like, the copy that these people write, like, is not great. Or it's not translated great. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, 50 challengeable stages. It's like a card battling game. I don't. I don't know. They're like wielding paintbrushes or something. Let's be the winner, making the best of many players and various effective cards. <laughs> Uh, okay. I mean, it's only 389. So hey, if there's any modicum of fun, it's probably worth your time uh, because it's 389. It's like, uh, wh what can you get for 389? Like, I can't even get my almond milk ice cream bars for 389. So, okay. It's two players. It's a puzzle action board game. Okay. Samurai Defender Ninja Warfare. <laughs> this is just the, word jumble. I'm laughing at the price. 720. And $7.20. What is happening? <laughs> What is happening? The summer heat is getting to wait, getting wait, to our switch. But after some digging, as that give you like open the page of the game, it says it's seven ninety nine. I don't know why Nintendo says it's seven twenty. Okay, that's weird. Um it's a tower defense game we've all been waiting for. Defend your castle against waves of enemies, so it is a side scrolling tower defense game. It has a lot of samurai on screen. Um and you have to utilize the capabilities of your men to repel the daunting invading forces, fight your way in high octane boss battles. Um, it has, uh, top quality kawaii artwork, and I recommend Half Minute Hero. Same. Okay. <sighs> One Strike, 499, June 8th. Become the deadliest fighter in vintage Japan. There are six fighters. Challenge your friends or the AI. Um, there are four modes. One Life, Arcade, Team Duel. So it kind of looks like this is like you have like one hit. Like one hit, you're dead, which I kind of like. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, so it's, it it's reminds me of Dive Kick. Nidhog. Yeah. Except without the movement, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Okay, so this is one strike for four ninety nine, um, Brought to you by Cubic Games. Two players local. Operation Hardcore, June 8th. An action-packed 2D side-scrolling game inspired by classic twitchy action games of yesteryear. In this one, the year is 1999, so this is something I can level with. Mm -hmm. um, you pack up your essential guns, cigars, whiskey. Okay, I can't level with it anymore. Um, 12 levels, four playable characters, 360 degree aiming, two player local co op. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Brought to you by Greenlight Games. Um, and yeah, I really like some of the enemies. They're very angry looking. It kind of reminds me of like Duke Nukem, like of yesteryear, like the ones that I played when I was little. You shouldn't have been playing Duke Nukem when you were little. No, it was, but it was like this. It wasn't the like. It wasn't like Duke Nukem 3D. Or, it was like the very old ones when he like wasn't that offensive. Mm, okay. It's like way back in the day. Like I played it on my PC. Oh, Duke Nukem would not fit in now. You could not put make a, a Duke Nukem game in 2018. No, I just thought that. All right, next. All right, finally, cool. we've we've made it. We've arrived. We we've gotten through half the list, but I'm promising you again. Like the back half of this list is absolutely bonkers. Sushi Striker, The Way of Sushido, June 8th, 49.99. Learn the way of Sushido. And I'm going to throw this one to Gabe because you actually are pumped for this. Yeah, I mean, the game's coming this week. Hopefully, we can get our hands on it soon. Originally announced just for 3DS, there was a surprise announcement uh, at one of the directs saying, hey, it's on Switch now. The story's really cool. The demo is something a lot of people were very pleasantly surprised by. While the gameplay is like kind of 
the the battle system i'm gonna say is like sort of simple it's like very like match x amount of numbers thing Uh, it's also a little bit intricate as it gets deeper i actually enjoyed it quite a bit um like really hyped for the game for some reason maybe because there's just not like a lot happening right now but i enjoyed the demo i know a lot of other people like unexpectedly uh, enjoyed the demo as well and uh, it's this week so not much longer of a wait um i like the 50 dollar price tag as opposed to the 60 dollars, so uh, i'm with it yeah i'm definitely gonna give it a go um i need to download that demo and check it out but i uh I don't like sushi, but I like the style of this game. Hmm. All right. Hexalogic, June 12th, 2 dollars Relaxing puzzle with beautiful graphics and unique rules inspired by Sudoku. It looks very uh, simple, but again, you can never toss some of these titles out. Uh, four completely different game worlds, 60 levels. It is very easy to learn, and at the same time, a highly addictive language-independent logic game. Very exciting. Jump. No, I'm, not, I'm yawning because I'm exhausted, not because of this game. Gabe, don't try to don't try to peg me off as the the board gamer. I'm not. This is a great month. Uh, we got E3, Sushi Striker, and a whole lot more. Simple gameplay mechanics adorned with a beautiful graphic design, relaxing music, challenging yet not unbeatable puzzles. That, that's the, that's the kind of puzzles I like. Want to make sure that my puzzles aren't unbeatable. <laughs> um, but man, <laughs> this is the month for. I, I guess they know that E3 is like a very busy time because they are providing a lot of opportunity for relaxation. Mm-hmm. All right. Tennis World Tour uh, had a slight delay on Switch. It released last week on other platforms, but it's coming to Switch for 60 Bones on June 12th. This is your very realistic tennis game. This is your Roger Federer tennis game. This is your uh, Let's Get Ready for Mario Tennis Aces video game. I kind of want to check this out. I don't know. I just want to see after playing so much Mario Tennis Aces in the tournament demo. I kind of want to just see, like, what is it like? How does it play? Is it Does it compare? Is Mario Tennis Aces the greatest things in sliced bread or are there other tennis opportunities out there um again like we're very high in mario tennis aces so like if you're gonna pick one tennis game this month i think it's probably the one with the mustached man but maybe i'm talking about roger federer because he has a mustache on the cover as well Mm. uh the thing that stands out to me is they have like licensed shoes here you see them with like nikes and adidas and asics i'm like okay all right video game i see you you paid these licensing fees to be able to put a check mark on your shoes it's going to have a lot more of a traditional uh, sports career mode. You can create a character um, as well as obviously play as uh, 30 of the best tennis players in the world, 18 types of courts, Big Ben Interactive, and Breakpoint on the development side. Lego The Incredibles, Gabe, June 15th, $59.99. Lego and Warner Brothers and Traveler Tales love the Switch. They bring us day and date on just about everything they put out. This one chronicles both movies. I'm very excited to see Incredibles 2. I might even see it with you. Um, and it's going to be, you know, your traditional Lego fair, which means high quality, good co-op, and probably uh, some pretty clever, cute moments. I do like that they're bringing Pixar to the Lego universe, and um, yeah, you can get this game before the movie or after the movie, and it's out day and date, which is super, super great. Yeah, I don't dare question the qualities of these Lego games, because despite their under originality is what I'll say because they are kind of like samey a lot. Um, they're always of like super high quality and a great time for co-op with a, a younger human of some kind, whatever relationship you may have with that human, son, daughter, cousin, doesn't matter. Uh, so yeah, it would be cool if we could play this together, co-op a little bit. Mm-hmm. Zach. That'd be fun. Yeah, I like that it goes through both movies. I think that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, hopefully there's a lot of content there. All right, flashback is coming on June 17th from 1999. Uh, This is the 25th anniversary edition of the game. Um, It is the original title with uh, post-FX graphic filters, completely remastered sound and music, a brand new rewind function, which we know and love from Mega Man, tutorials, and you can see if you're up to the challenge. Brought to you by Microids, uh, who is doing the work bringing this, uh, the, the publishing, this remastered flashback. Have you ever heard slash played of Remastered? I mean, of, uh, excuse me, Flashback. I have heard, but not played. Okay, same. Oh, I just I wanted to see if you knew anything else about it. The, the game, we were, what, three years old when this came out? So Yeah. Yeah. I was a year, a year away from playing video games. Mm-hmm. 
four years old is when the journey began. And uh, Gabe, you know, back at that time, you might have been a lost child. And that's why it's releasing June 19th for $49.99 physical and digital. It's an RPG set in modern Japan. You're an occult journalist thrust into the middle of a conflict between angels, demons, and fallen angels. Now you must capture defeated foes and turn them into allies. Pokemon. So capture those that you beat. Dungeon dive. And it's a very traditional uh, old school um I don't, well, I don't know what the technical term is, but like one of those sort of like dungeon RPGs um, where you're moving through in first person and fighting all of this stuff with the character icons on the bottom of the screen. Yeah. Uh, that, I, I like the style. I really like the box art. Man, Zach, 15-year-old me would have loved this. I was I played every JRPG on the on the PlayStation. Like, yeah. I like all of them. So, every single one. Yeah. I, I at least tried them all, yeah. Uh, so... You know, an older version, a younger version of me would have liked this. But, yeah, now, nice. yeah, I'm not so sure now. All right, we have reached the uh, glorious, we'll call it the glorious nine. Because there are nine games left, and I like almost all of them. Drawful 2 hits on June 21st. Um, we discussed this in our Games of the Week new announcements video. It is a great uh, title from the people who make Jackbox Party Pack. They are releasing Jackbox Party Pack 5 later this year, but Drawful is one of the best games they've ever created. This one is a standalone Drawful 2. Um, it was only available standalone on other platforms. It's very good. It introduces two colors. Now you can draw with much more style because you have two colors. You can uh, draw things such as I Married a Pogo Stick, um, Bromance, um, Morning News Team, things that are very relevant to... Uh, modern uh, times you can draw a magic janitor um, a lot of stuff going on here and it's really really great all the jackbox games are i think recommendable um especially on switch given that you can whip it out anywhere and play with your friends <laughs> yeah I, th I think that little needs to be said about draw for two i think it's a very fun experience i wonder how much it's gonna cost since it's just like one game as opposed to a pack yeah that's a little bit of a of an issue i guess it's it's 20 bucks on PSN, at least that's what it launched at. It, it's full, very much worth the price, but I guess if you're going to you know, look at the, the nickel and diming, like the party packs are worth it more. You can get Drawful 1, but again, Drawful 2, it's, it's dare I say, their most popular game um, of these. You know, I, I think uh, Fibbage and Quiplash are pretty popular as well, but Drawful is, is a really great time. Mm-hmm. All right, Minecraft is launching physically on June 21st for $30. This is uh, a game. It's a, it's a new game. It's it's very <laughs> not, not much is known about it. You, you break <laughs> blocks, you dig down, you look for diamonds, you play a guy named Steve, and you try to... Okay, it's Minecraft, June 21st. Musinix, $26.99, June 21st. This also is a physical edition. Um, it is a hardcore rhythm game where you're going down the line with a lot of different art styles, playing a lot of songs that uh, I don't know. These are not mainstream songs. These are more, um, I, I, I guess, like... Side they, stream. Yeah, side stream songs. Yeah. So uh, if oh. you like your music and rhythm, here you go. <laughs> also, if you like your uh, allergy or cold medicine, because I'm pretty sure that's what Musinex actually is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I took Musinex uh, on my flight home from Redacted. Okay. <laughs> All right, Gabe. <laughs> We've reached the big one. June 21st, twenty four ninety nine. Vegas Party. Welcome to the gambling-friendly universe of this over-the-top version of Las Vegas City. One to four players in TV mode. One to four players in tabletop mode. One player in handheld mode. Ten mini games. You got Roulette, Blackjack, Texas Hold'em, Baccarat, Bingo. 17 casinos. 18 environments, though. So there's 17 casinos, 18 environments. What is that one environment that's not a casino? Is it a pool? Maybe. Is it a, is it a, is it a show? Is it a Vegas show? Is it the airport? There, there are slot machines at the Vegas airport. Um, extreme humoristic cliches of Sin City. I feel like that is like their disclaimer so they don't get in trouble. Extreme humoristic cliches of Sin City. All right. They say it's fun for the whole family. Yeah, so. yeah. Oof. Start, start on, on their little gambling journey young, guys. <laughs> Here's where it gets interesting, though. Avoid the dangers like twisters and earthquakes. So as you're playing Texas Hold'em, there's like twisters and er like what? Evacuate, yeah. The, the casino gets to keep the what money. Do you Everybody do? run. You turn the, the game off. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, if you want some uh, some classic gambling games, I bought something like this for my grandpa, uh, like literally 20 years ago. I was like, hey, why don't I get you this cool Caesar's Palace casino game on PlayStation One, and we can I can show you that video games are cool. I don't think he ever played it. Yeah. Thanks, Grandpa. Best game of All the right. month. 
Mario Tennis Aces, $59.99, June 22nd. It's freaking incredible. It brings in story mode um, because we got to play the uh, just straight-up tennis gameplay in the tournament. And even with limited content, that game is so good. There are a ton of characters. Data miners have revealed pretty much everybody. It's a good list if you want to find it. It also will bring in the uh, swing mode where you can motion control your Mario. Um, it obviously has a whole lot of cups and tournaments. There will be online tournaments as well, boss battles, mini games, and the story mode, local play, online play. This one is the real deal, and I think it is going to be one of the best Switch games of 2018. Yeah, people are saying on Twitter that this is like the best like tennis game in like the last like 10, 20 years. Like it's yeah. it's that great, and, and I wholeheartedly agree. I played so many hours of the <laughs> of the online tournament zach i unlocked every character twice <laughs> it's, it's very impressive that a game a tennis game can be that addictive and i wonder how long it can hold it up but i mean i don't i don't see it slowing down like we said like the full game is going to have a ton more content a ton more characters so very hyped for this cannot wait this is a great uh post e3 uh you know smoothie i will say you're done with e3 it's a little bit sad you got like that post e3 uh depression and then like mario tennis aces comes with cool box art a lot of visors short shorts and some great gameplay so get pumped for that a few days later you got luminous remastered june 26 it's not brand new uh but this game is gold i loved it on my psp and i am gonna play it again uh, it is obviously a very well-known, very acclaimed puzzle game produced by legendary creator Tatsuya Mizuguchi. It is coming to Switch. It's an HD remaster of the original game. It's got good music. It's got unique gameplay. It is very entrancing and addictive. Um, there is local two-player uh, versus mode. You can uh, edit the skins. There's time attack puzzles, missions, and it has HD rumble. So you can feel the music and feel the puzzle pieces. It also uh, has a trance vibration setting. Um, so you can put multiple, this is so weird. You can put multiple sets of Joy-Con in your pockets or around your hips to feel the game beyond your hands. <laughs> we have to do that. <laughs> we have to. Okay. <laughs> Marking down on my calendar, trance vibration day. Remember when, like, Rez had that where you would put the controller, like, on you? <laughs> no, I don't remember that. Okay, well, Rez had this mode where you could, like, feel the vi Okay. I don't know if it's supposed to be, like, a sexual thing, but it sure as heck sounds like it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. The fun don't stop, though. Ease 8, Lacrimosa of Dana. Uh, Ease is a great series. It's underrated. This game, not getting much love uh, in terms of, like, hype, but... This is a very well-reviewed game as part of a very well-reviewed series. $60, physical and digital. I think it's going to bring a nice action RPG to Switch. It looks pretty good, and as long as it plays and runs well, I think this is one that will be a swell summertime. I'm going to be playing it, and I think you should as well. Yeah, you are a red-headed boy of some kind. I'm not familiar with, with the franchise. I'm, I'm the blue-headed girl, actually. Oh, okay. You should Thanks. probably be a red-headed boy. All right, but nope. re regardless, I, I want to play this one as well. You, you, you've you sung the praises of this franchise for a little bit, and, and me claiming to like JRPGs the way I do, I'm sad that I've never really like experienced one of these like fully, so yeah, this might be the time. Really good boss battles, and again, the back of the month is where all of the cake lies. It's like a freaking happy birthday every day, not just June 5th. Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus finally releases on June 29th. By all accounts, the game will uh, play pretty well. Doom was a good indicator. People seem to really like this version. It does have the frame rate thing. So if you are a stickler for that, it could give you some hiccups. But other than that, this is a very well-reviewed game with a really intense plot and storyline. Um, and it's coming to Switch. 60 bucks, physical and digital. There is a download, so you're going to have to keep that in mind. Um, it's, you know little over half a year late but it's got motion aiming and it is bethesda doing work again on the nintendo platform we hope that they announce some stuff for switch at e3 um, and that this is not the last title from them this year yeah for sure i've never played the game so switch is going to be where i do it you know unfortunately the frame rate isn't going to be what we want it to be but you know for the most part doom ran generally well so i'm, I'm looking forward to that and if uh, Nazis and Chrome Hounds and violence is not your thing, uh, you can venture into a yesteryear palace of pure platforming nostalgia difficulty, and it holds up. Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy was 
awesome on PlayStation 4. It's coming June 29th to Switch for 40 bucks, and this is a great, great package. It brings you Crash Bandicoot, Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back, and Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped. The original Crash is like a really great game. It is hard as nails at times. It is so satisfying when you complete those levels. If you are able to do a perfect run, glorious feeling. Um, this is another great addition to the Switch library, and there's a chance the game means more if some of the rumors uh, pan out and we do meet this man in Smash. It could uh, be an even bigger part of the Switch calendar, but as of now, it's totally worth it, 40 bucks. It's totally worth it. Yeah, I didn't play the remaster on PS4, but I know a ton of people really, really loved it. Switch is where I'm going to be playing, like, a lot of these things. This and Wolfenstein and Ease, like, you know, games that may be available to play elsewhere. But Switch is where I want to experience them. I like taking these things on the go. I like, uh, I, Zach, I have a newfound fondness for playing video games from bed now. Mm -hmm. I've developed that this week, so that's probably where I'm going to play most of Crash. I I'm very excited, and it's a great way to close out the month. It's, it's a good release. Absolutely. So a very uh, quality month. Like maybe it started out a little bit slow and with a whole lot of uh, weirdness, but it really packs a punch, Gabe. I'm going to make you pick two this month just to make it real dicey and difficult and also give the people uh, some idea of where they may want to spend their money because it is a wallet-intensive month. You may be pre-ordering stuff on Switch. You may be setting aside income for Smash, Fire Emblem, Pokemon. What two games do you pick from this very quality month of June? Okay. Automatically Mario Tennis, best game in the yep. month, so yep. that's one. And I, 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 I hate to do this, but I'm going to go with Crash, even though the games yeah, are a little I think bit... that's the right choice. The games are a little bit older. I wanted to say Sushi Striker. I really did. But I also feel like it's unfair to do like the two like Nintendo exclusive games. So I, I'm, I'm going to go with Crash. I, I think that if you get Mario Tennis Aces and you get the Crash Insane Trilogy this month, you're going to have a heck of a good time. A lot of content, especially with, with Crash there because it's like three games. So you get those two, I think you're going to be a happy camper. Absolutely. There really are a lot of good options here. I think that Gabe may have hit the uh, the perfect duo. I'm going to put my coins down on Mario Tennis Aces and Ease 8. Um, I really like action games that have cool boss battles and you get to combine you know special attacks magic attacks and uh you know melee combat I, I think that game and that franchise is underrated i hope it finds a pretty good audience with switch i'm excited to play it i haven't ever played ease 8 um i've played some of them on my vita so i am excited for that and then yeah mario tennis Ace, it's just it's too good it's too freaking good i think they have hit a gold mine of magic uh, of their own with that tennis tell some super pumped for that but you, you really couldn't go wrong with crash uh, i think wolfenstein is totally valid sushi striker as you mentioned gabe um there's not as much from the indie scene this month uh, but who knows we may get a surprise maybe e3 brings us a splash announcement for something like hollow knight uh or i don't know messenger we'll see yeah i'm really uh, hoping the messenger comes out um this month it, it all we have is summer so i mean maybe yep and uh a, a, a last-minute mention for Mario plus Rabbids Donkey Kong DLC because we don't know exactly when that hits, but it's supposed to hit that this month, and I think that there is a case to be made for that honestly being one of the, the top two or three games that you pick up. Um, Gabe, we, we, we covered this in another video. A ton of content there, real cool character cameos, and uh, there is the slight potential that King K. Rool could be in it, so I have to play through it to find out. Yeah, uh, there's also slight potential that it's just like released during E3. I hope that doesn't yeah. happen. I really, uh, I know that's like selfish, but I want to be able to like to play like through this thing. Uh, and if we're gonna be at E3, we probably won't have like a ton of time. So I don't know. Maybe like the day we get back home from E3 is when <laughs> I want this game to release. But yeah, the game is, I, I, it's coming in June. We know that. Yep, so, so that's one not to forget about after the 30 we just mentioned. Let us know in the comments down below, guys and girls, which games you are most excited for, which ones you're going to be picking up, and if there's anything we missed, let us know. There's always some games that slip through the cracks, so uh, we may have missed a few, but I think that is it for June. It's going to be a glorious month. We're going to get a layout of the next six months for Nintendo, and we're going to get some really good games. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest and greatest from the Switch and these lists of releases every month. Follow us on Twitter and Discord for up-to-minute updates. We'll be at E3, so you'll want to follow us there and there. And until next time, everybody, for myself and Gabe, enjoy the month, enjoy the summer or the winter, I guess, if you're on the other side of the world. And uh, the Switch will bring us all together, especially on June 22nd. Until that time, everybody, thanks again for myself and Gabe. Switch Force, Gabe. Switch Force.